There was one second at 2.26 a.m., the 28th of February, 2016, where I thought maybe it's not so bad an idea to ask for five likes. How sad. Oh dear, I'm going to be angering quite some people in this episode, aren't I? I don't like furries. In fact, you could say that furries make my skin crawl and my spine curve. But not for the usual reason people cite the porn, but because the community itself is kind of obnoxious and I hate it. I have no ill feeling toward pornography, per se, as it's an intensely private, should be an intensely private thing, reserved for the bedroom alone. Keep in mind, when I refer to furries, unless I make it absolutely clear that uh, what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the furry fandom and not the idea of anthropomorphized lower animals. If I didn't like them, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have drawn myself as an avatar to be used a human, wouldn't I have? For my first point, I'll give a little context. I was on the Foxlebox server for like a month in August before I ended up fucking my laptop in the ass with unprotected Windows Vista for shits and giggles. And my time there was one of the most miserable I've had in a very, very long time. The only reasons I was there was because I had a town I was building named Little Hamburg, modeled after 1920s Austria, and I had friends on that server. But the point is that there were a couple people on there, Misty Fox is the one I know by name, no, I know that I'm essentially saying, please don't kill the Jews, Herman, but please don't harass them, they're annoying but harmless. It spoke in this weird, annoying baby talk that makes me to this day look longingly at the pile, pile of rope on the other side of this room. It's not cute. It's annoying. It's just about as obnoxious as 12-year-old, run some XD, late taxel speak. Please stop. The word is does not have an H at the end, no matter how much Sean Connery wants you to believe it does. And that's just one example. Believe me when I assure you that every point I'm making here I've personally observed. Every single one. This isn't exclusive to furries. For example, some non-furries with pets talk to their animals this way. But I haven't personally seen it used anywhere else, so I'm going to guess that it's most prevalent in the furry fandom. Another thing I've seen on that server. Open air fetishes. Please do stand by while I vomit. Not everyone has your fetish, man. Get a grip of yourself. I personally don't enjoy it trying to build and hearing you people RP your mastication in the chat. It's not like I can turn it off either, because there are one or two people on the server that I really do like, like the bloke who lives in my town, Annoise Grey Owl. He was pretty cool. I still wonder... I still wonder what happened to Little Hamburg. Annoise, if you somehow stumbled onto this video, I'd love to hear what you did with it and if it's still there. I don't mind fetish porn. I don't look at it myself. Ha oh, ha, get it, because I'm 15. But I can see where it comes from. I don't mind seeing people talking about their fetishes on web pages where that sort of thing is expected, like, say, some porn catering to the fetish. But a lot of the time, they bring these things up in completely inappropriate situations, like in a Minecraft server where the minimum age is 14, or on the YouTube comments. Take it to email, please, and spare the rest of us. Like the last point, it's not exclusive to the furry fandom, but what is? Even furries, or if you prefer anthros, you degenerate, aren't exclusive to furries. Do you really think that, say, Naota Oshima, or Nolan Bushnell, or Bill and Joe, do you really think that they're furries? We're in the last case. R.I.P. Bill Joe and Hannah Barbera. Which brings me to another point. There's no originality. Now I'm well, well aware that this simply isn't a trait of furries. But furries are so notorious for this that it wouldn't be like me to leave it alone. Notice how there is no published original fiction starring furries. There's somewhat anthropomorphized characters, such as in The Lion King and Redwall. But notice that A, these probably weren't made by furries, since for the first one Disney is a company and cannot have opinions, and for the second one Brian Jacques is dead and has been for about six years by the time of recording this. Good God, that feels that still feels weird to say. It's 2017. Wow. Only three years until 2020, my sheep. Think back to any game you've played that took place in 2020. That won't ever happen. Anyway, back on topic. B, they're not really furries, and at least not in the cl classical sense of human body, fur, head, and tail. They're funny animals in Red Wall's case, and personified animals in the Lion King's case. And notice how furries latch onto these properties and write for them instead of writing original work. Name for me one original and published work. And no, don't include magazines since those are usually meta and aren't like actual published works of fiction. 
done by a furry, and I'll admit that I'm a gay retard. Go ahead, this isn't like a rhetorical statement. Yeah, go ahead. And as for characters, if you browse a species tag on A621, you'll find a bunch of characters that somehow are so unique that they're all homogenous. Like, how many hoodie-wearing foxes have pink, purple, or green highlights in their fur? Furries try to be original, but fail at it so horribly that Mr. Peanut Butter from the show Bojack Horseman is somehow easily recognizable, despite being all yellow and generic looking. It's the sunglasses. Nobody ever thinks to give their characters eternal sunglasses. But back to my main topic. You won't remember some generic Siberian Husky's name because you first have to remember which one you've seen. They all look the same, because they aren't characters, they're flashbacks. I say bags, more like hollow basketballs at this point, but I have to separate this point from that point. Anatomy is a foreign concept to furries. Now this is a weaker point, and it's less about the community and its attitudes, but it's still a pet peeve of mine. Anatomy to them seems to be like what a Martian would be to us. You know, us in the real world. Regular bendings of what the human body can do, because I don't know, it's their fetish, they just suck, it's their style. Knowing the furry community, that last one's the answer I'd get. I don't know when it was, when it was decided that animal feet were the way to go, but I don't like it. It doesn't look natural. It looks like they should be falling over every couple of steps. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I've actually tried walking like this to see if it would work, and I would always end up tipping backward because the human body is top-heavy and is not designed for, say, canine legs, which are more suited to quadrupeds, like canines, and as such doesn't have support in case something with only two of them tips backwards. Add to this a tail, and that further weighs, weights against the back, and voila, you've got yourself a downed man. And let's not get into the anatomically impossible, organ tearing set. It's always okay, no matter what it is. Are we talking in second person from now on? Don't think I'm accusing you, my sheep, of doing this, unless you do. You can admit to actual pedophilia, incest, or bestiality, and the most reaction you'll get is a halfway split between the people who think those things might not be the most smart things to do, and the people who envy you and reinforce it. Or on some more obscure pages, you'll get a whole ton of people agreeing and showering the criminal with praise, and nobody thinking, yeah, maybe you shouldn't admit to that on the internet. Now, I don't really care too much about how you feel about these, but the law is the law, and as I've said before, Mr. Church, admitting you've broken it is as good an idea as doing it in front of an officer of the law. You can get away with a bunch of crazy shit, like wanting to turn your sister into a pair of socks, bone some newborn puppies, or shoot up a school, and you won't get universal hate. In fact, half the time you'd get praised for your wishes. Oh yeah, weird fetishes involving people dying. Yeah, furries really, really like pain. If you look at any mi micro macro images, and then look at the comments, you'll see a ton of people wanting to be crushed to death inside of a building, inside of the body of a giant. Although I will say that this is the best case scenario for the gene pool, in the case of the furry that is, there are thousands and thousands of people who probably just called their niece or uncle or whatever to talk about their birthday parties, and were normal in one skyscraper. Whoops, all gone because you wanted to get a, bit of se a little bit of sexual gratification before your timely death. People into Daikaiju are horrible people, and so are people who use gratuitous Japanese when they're really from Tennessee. And they can't assign a number to the amount of porn there is of people getting killed, molested, and ground up into dog food, in that order, where the idea of random strangers, often young female children, being killed and eaten by a dog turns these furries on. Alright, I've exaggerated somewhat on that exact plot, there's only like 10 of them, but still, that's like 11 too many. Why this is a fetish at all confuses me. I mean, some fetishes do have reasons to exist, and others not so much. This is one of the latter. I don't even consider this a fetish. It's the friend to natural selection. People who fantasize of dying and actually go through with it is less people with a fetish. Less people without self-preservation drive, less people to share their faulty genes. No matter who you are, you'll be accepted. The furry fandom is one where anyone is accepted and individuality is cherished because we all knew that that worked out so well the last times we tried that. Because of this, people are more likely to become what is often known as obnoxiously homosexual. I mean, people talking about their sexuality over at the end and all is something I hate. So, so to making it in your entire personality, what could possibly go wrong? And despite its name, it isn't just homosexuals, it's also transsexuals and people who want to be transsexual but aren't the 98% of the population who aren't. So they just make up some random, some random pronoun like here. Anyone who isn't heterosexual, cisgender, or not pretending to be not heterosexual and cisgender can be obnoxious about their sexuality. 
And whoa, mom, do we have some obnoxious homosexuals here. People absolutely love pushing their sexuality onto others. Since they're insecure about it and want others to be the same because it makes them feel better for some reason, I've genuinely seen loads of examples of this, and every time it takes me off. Just the double standard alone makes me seethe with anger. Actually, insecure homosexual and fake homosexual furries are the only furries who do this. Heterosexual ones just get their business done and get on with their day. Maybe it's because there are so few to make such noise. I don't get why they'd be insecure about it. Most furries are homosexual. At least most countable furries, that is, and, that was, and that's what matters, since those are the ones who are most visible and so are who are the most important members of the furry fandom to the outside world. The heterosexual furries likely do outnumber homosexuals, but they are so discreet about it. Oh. 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 Jesus Christ. I know what the problem is. Hold on. Hold on. I know what the problem is. Uh, please stand by. I've got to make a part two on the LGBT community as a whole. That's going to be a really fun video. But right now, let's just say I hope these points have at least convinced you to see my side of the argument. So I've got only one thing left to say. Toodaloo, go with God, and don't take any wooden nickels. Or in other words, goodbye. I listened to Sonic's One Last Night Stand, and then it auto-played and went to all the single furries. Hitler was born in the wrong generation. We should take notes from what he's done. Oh, the microphone's on. Sorry. Uh, hello, you stuck around? Thank you so much for increasing my average watch duration. As a reward, or to some of you a punishment, I'll give you a sequel to the A Problem with Vidbit Future video. Red Exec, one of the people working on the website, responded to the video and said, Whatever slides on YouTube will slide on Vibbit Future. Firstly, I'd like to say thank you to Red Exec for clearing that up. There are actual KKK processions on YouTube. But secondly, there's another problem with Vibbit Future. Memes. Memes are not how a professional company operates. Bonzi Buddy was last funny when? 2015? That is all.